I don't know if you're anything like me, but it doesn't matter what holiday finishes up, my body craves greens and vegetables. Now don't ask me why, don't eat them throughout the holidays, I have no idea, it's the story of my life. So I'm gonna make a really delicious Cobb salad, loaded up with some tasty lettuces, chicken, tomatoes, avocado, and a homemade dressing. You will love this recipe. The Cobb salad as we know it today was created almost a century ago in Hollywood at the Brown Derby restaurant by owner Bob Cobb. It's really easy to make and like I said, it's just loaded with a bunch of different flavors, which makes it extra delicious. The first thing we're going to do is knock out a little prep, so all we need to do is assemble it at the end, starting with that dressing. The best way to describe this dressing is almost like a mustard red wine vinegar vinaigrette. So the first thing we're going to add into a blender is some red wine vinegar, followed up with the juice of one half lemon, one garlic clove, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. The next thing we want to do is add in some Dijon mustard. Some recipes call for dry mustard. You could use that as well. A little bit of sugar for some sweetness. Next thing we want to do is add in some water just to chill it out a little bit. And then for the oils, we use a combination first of olive oil and then next a salad oil or even a safflower oil will do perfect here. And of course, just like everything, let's season it up well with a little bit of sea salt and fresh cracked black pepper. Go ahead now and pop the lid onto the blender. This will emulsify very quickly, so just sort of pulse it or run it on low speed, and like you can see here, the dressing comes together very, very fast. Once it is completely combined and emulsified, just simply remove it and set it to the side at room temperature. So a couple things here. If you don't have a blender or a food processor to make this dressing, no sweat. You can absolutely still just do it in a bowl. Only when it comes to the oil portion, just whisk with one hand while you drizzle slowly the oil in with the other hand. Now, you don't have to use this Cobb salad dressing. There are plenty of other salad dressings that you could use if you love them that you can certainly put on there. This is just the classic dressing that's used and I love it. So we're gonna stick with that. Now for the bacon. So I've got some center cut, thick cut bacon and the best way that I know how to cook it is in the oven. So on a sheet tray lined with parchment paper, what I'm gonna do is add the bacon right to that tray. Now for me and a little rule of thumb, I gently overlap the bacon. It helps me fit more on there. And plus what does bacon do when it cooks? It shrivels up and gets smaller. So nothing's gonna stick or not cook. This is the perfect way to do it. Going in the oven on 375 degrees, it's gonna take in between 18 and 22 minutes for this to completely finish cooking. Once it is done cooking, I remove the bacon immediately and set it on some paper towels to drain any excess bacon fat, and then go ahead and set it to the side. We'll get to it a little bit later. And you know me, don't you dare get rid of that bacon fat. Go ahead and drip it right off in that tray into a container, put it in the freezer for later. You know that I love bacon fat and love cooking with it. Okay, fine, you have no parchment paper. Maybe you don't even have an oven. You can, of course, cook the bacon until crisp in a cast iron skillet, no problem. Here's what we're gonna do now. In a classic Cobb salad, there is a combination of lettuces that are used. We're gonna start off with some romaine lettuce. So go ahead and slice it in half. And then what I like to do is slice down on it two different times. This helps create some small bite-sized pieces, nothing worse than having extremely large lettuce pieces hanging out of your mouth. And then cut one to two inch pieces all the way down until about three inches. Then what I do is I flip it over. You see that core right there? I just trim around it because that core is bitter and hard and no good. Now go ahead and set the romaine to the side in a colander. Next, I've got some endive or also known as chicory. This is another classic lettuce to use in Cobb salad. Similar to the romaine lettuce, we just want to cut this into one to two inch pieces. Again, you want it to be bite sized There is nothing, I mean nothing worse than huge chunks of lettuce hanging out of your mouth when you're trying to eat a salad. It's kind of embarrassing. Now go ahead and add that lettuce right to that colander as well. And for the last classical lettuce, 
it is cress. Now I've got some more baby type cress being used here, but you can absolutely buy whole leaf size cress. Um, I like these little ones. They're just tasty and a little bit sweeter than the full thing. So rinse it well in your colander with some cold water. Obviously, I don't have a salad spinner. If you do, do it in there. Fantastic. And then what I'm going to do is lay it on a big flour sack towel. I think I got this one from John Ritz. They make these awesome flour sack towels like this. Just dry it off. Get as much as you can so that the lettuce isn't wilted. And then just simply set it to the side. You know that I love keeping recipes super classical. That's why I use the three traditional lettuces used in here. But look, if you can't find chicory or you can't even find cress, don't sweat it, okay? You can use romaine. Maybe just sub in a little bit of iceberg or even a spring mix lettuce. Use what you have. Make your best iteration of this. If you can't find everything, don't worry about it. Now. For a little bit more prep here, starting off with some tomatoes. Now, if you're in the winter time, these little Campari tomatoes or even Roma tomatoes are pretty decent. Then if you're doing summer, definitely use some vine ripes or some four by fours. So I've also got some cherry tomatoes. I just want to change it up and add a combination of tomatoes. Nothing wrong with that, right? As long as there's flavor there. And now for an avocado to make sure an avocado is ripe. What I like to do is pick off that little seed at the end. If it's green and pulls off with these, you are good to go, my friends. Now to prepare it, go ahead and slice down until you hit that center seed and then sort of carve around it. Once the knife is all the way through, just twist off one end. You see there's a big seed there. What I'm going to do, and please be very careful, is place it on a towel, then gently strike down with your knife into the seed and twist until it pulls out. Please be careful doing that. I cannot say it enough. Now using a large spoon, what we want to do is carve all that goodness right out of the outside shell. It's very, very easy to do. Just flip it over. And then what I'm going to do is medium to large dice the avocado. Remember, bite-sized pieces. Then go ahead and set these to the side as well. And let's bring that crispy cooked bacon back out. We're just going to give this a slice, maybe just a once over, no big deal. Again, bite-sized pieces, that's the goal. Set it to the side. Next, I've got some chilled, completely cooked chicken breast. Now, what I like to do to get these nice and small is slice it in half widthwise, and then again, medium to large dice it. You can absolutely leave this in long strips if that's how you want to serve it, no problem. And I know you're saying, Chef Billy, you didn't even show us how to make this chicken breast. Don't worry, I've got a video exclusively for how to cook chicken breast perfectly. Watch that video, chill the chicken when you're done, cut it just like you see here. Now for the eggs. I've got some pre-cooked hard-boiled eggs still in the shell. Now to easily remove it, I give it a little crack, gently roll it, then I immediately go right over to the sink and under some lukewarm water, just sort of get all the shells off there, give it a good rinse. This looks excellent. Going back over to the cutting board and you could cut this any which way you want to be completely honest with you. What I'm gonna do is slice it into quarter wedges. It's gonna look nice and it's still a nice bite-sized pieces. And the same thing with the hard boiled eggs. I've got a fantastic video that shows you how to soft boil, medium boil, or hard boiled eggs. Check it out. I promise you, it is a life changing video when it comes to hard boiling eggs. That's all I did with that, chilled them just like you saw in that video. Now, of course, I say this every single week to all my Comies, to all my chefs in training out there. You put these fundamental classic cooking techniques into practice, you will be a better chef, a better home cook. I promise you. Once all of these things come together, like how to make a beautiful cob salad, the dressing, everything that goes with it, following those techniques that I use, I promise you, I can't say enough, I promise you, you will be a better cook, my friends. Now it's time to plate up in slow-mo. So obviously we've got our big bowl of rinsed romaine, endive, and cress salad mix. And really now it's all about layering on next to each other all of those wonderful ingredients that we prepped up. You can mix it ahead of time or you can sort of fan it out like I did. And of course, let's not forget that delicious dressing and my oh my, check out this beauty. It's just so refreshing after always those heavy foods after every single holiday of the year. It's so tasty. You definitely have to make it. It's easy to make. 
Be sure to subscribe to my channel, like and share this video, and check out this video right here. I made it just for you and you'll love it. I'll see you on there.